From a beauty queen losing her crown because she's too old at the age of 25, to Harry Potter's controversial comments that men and women can't be friends at all, and new rules for cell phones at the dinner table. These are all the stories everyone's are talking about this week. Here to help me get to the bottom of them is former Miss America, Kirsten Hagelin, social media analyst Chris Ruby, and the president of Penn Financial Group, and Fox News contributor Matt McCall. Nice to see all of you this morning. Morning. Yes. All right, I'd be remiss, uh, Kirsten, if I didn't start with you on this story. So 24-year-old Amanda Longacre was forced to give up um, her title is Miss Delaware because, well, she turned too old after the cutoff point for when you could become too old. What do you make of this? Right. Well, there are clear eligibility rules in every contract that a girl who competes at the local, state, or national level signs. And there are certain, you know, eligibility rules and requirements you have to follow. Um, you know, our heart breaks, and I say our because obviously I continue to represent, you know, the Miss America organization for the rest of my life. Um, and, you know, our heart breaks for this young woman. She had to go through this. I mean, it's awful. We don't know if she missed it, if the state organization missed it, but, you know, um, Miss America really Really wanted to honor this girl and what she went through, so they continued. They decided to award her the scholarship. You know, even though she's not going to be able to compete at Miss America because she is ineligible. I think my heart is not breaking. I mean, yeah. you, you, if you don't know how old you are, you probably shouldn't be Miss anything. I mean, the, <laughs> the rules are pretty clear. You can only be 24 years old. She turns 25. Not only should my heart should not break for her, whoever does this organization should be fired. How can you not figure out how old somebody is? Well, it's a nonprofit, so you can't technically. You know, we are a nonprofit sure. organization, the largest scholarship provider of women, for women, and you know that that's the. The, the rules the are rules, though, and she Absolutely, the rules. and people should be held accountable, you know, but the, the great thing is she is getting her scholarship. But Chris, are, is, is, so is Miss America ageist? I definitely, <laughs> I definitely think, you know, from a PR perspective, I think she could have taken a negative and turned it into a positive. Rather than going on air, you know, and using the media appearances as an opportunity to complain, I think she should have taken this and sort of, you know, looked at the larger issue of ageism, you know, is 24 the new 50? That's what this should have been about. <laughs> she was fun in a PR move. I like that. Well, yeah. how can Daniel Radcliffe, he's having to do a little uh, PR spinning this morning. This is what Daniel Radcliffe, of course, you know him as Harry Potter, had to say. Now he's on Broadway. He says this about men and women and the can't be friends. He says this idea of the friend zone is a terrible male idea. Have you ever heard a girl say they're in the friend zone? It's a thing that I think men should be really careful about using. So can men and women actually be friends? Men and women can definitely be friends. The you friends don't that? exist. I think women like to tell themselves that that's the case. <laughs> no. But you're fooling yourselves. No, I, I, would have to, I would have to agree with you on that. And I think he's right to point out that if you are in a relationship with someone and you are in it for purely platonic reasons, if someone does start to feel romantic, you've got to address that head on. You've got to be upfront about it because the more that you let it fester, people are going to get hurt. You know, oftentimes the man is going to get hurt. So it's better to address it up front and be guys done are, with guys it. Guys are absolute wimps. They're not going to tell right. a girl they've been friends with, I now find you attractive. Well, it's not going to happen. I don't even know what the friend zone was. I did Google it this morning. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. But, I mean, it's not realistic. I mean, a guy who's in a friend zone is basically just too afraid to tell his friend, his girl, that he's attracted right. to her. Right. So he's wimpy. What exactly. you're saying is if this exists, then the guy is a wimp. Yeah, so I don't feel bad for this guy either. Bingo. He's a wimp, it, right? I mean, because she's probably just keeping him at arm's length. If the, she thinks that they're friends, then he's just too much of a wimp, and she's keeping him at arm's well, length. Yeah, and either way, I think it's okay, and I think it's what we're seeing is resurgence back to more traditional stuff. Why not try dating a friend versus someone you've never met on Tinder before? You know what I mean? Like, let's start yeah. with a friend versus a stranger. I don't think it's such a bad idea. Yeah, and if a woman's getting signs, too, that the guy is more into her than she's into him, it's also, you know, have her responsibility to say, hey, can we talk about this? And if, if it's not going to work, we need to it's move on. It's confusing. I mean, <laughs> if you like somebody, just tell them you like them. <laughs> exactly. All right, here's another story that people were talking about this week. Of course, a piece published in the Wall Street Journal last week outlining the top 21 phone etiquette rules for the 21st century. Among the tips on this list, the golden rule, nobody is allowed to look at a smartphone during dinner. Nobody. <laughs> is this a good rule for going forward? Just put cell phones away or don't even bring them out of the house anymore? Yeah, I think it's a brilliant rule. I mean, I can't tell you. I've been to several dinners where you have six, seven people at the table. Everyone's on a smartphone. It just really does a disastrous thing to communication. I mean, right. we're human beings. We can look at each other in the eye, talk to one another. That's what getting together is for. We can say that, though, but I mean, how often have you sit at a dinner, I mean, and you want to pull it out? And what do you do? Okay, so you're dating this friend or you meet somebody. You have a bad date. You're going to sit there through the entire bad date. You need that phone to get out. So I mean, you, you need so that. You Excuse yourself to the restroom. You go. No one listen said you, on that list said you can't. You can't even go to the restroom. I think it's rude. To Do you pick honest. up the phone at dinner? 
Even as a social media expert, I still do not pick up the phone. I think it's rude. Wow. I think that we want to try. And, here's my issue with it, right? So all this social media stuff, I actually think that in order to do well in social media, you need to be social. And what's happening is if you need social media content, you need to actually be present with people so you have something to tweet about later. That's absolutely right. And <laughs> that's, that's what's really happening. Really? <laughs> Did someone's phone just go off? <laughs> <laughs> not any of ours. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'm Clayton Morris on Twitter. Weigh in on this and, and everything we talked about. Nice to see you this morning. Morning, all of you. While you're eating, yeah.